So without further ado, let's get started with our first talk by Tobias Glock on decentralized reconstruction in academia. And uh, please use the chat or question or the Q&A if you have any questions, um, and we'll take them at the end of the talk. All right, can you see my slides? Yes. That's good. All right, yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I have nothing to disclose. And um, I changed the title of my talk slightly to distributed image reconstruction because I thought that distributed better describes what I'll be talking about. And what I wanna do is I wanna first discuss why and when you might need distributed image reconstruction. Um, then in the second part, I want to talk about how you can implement distributed image reconstruction in practice and share a bit of our experience with this topic. And then in the last part, I will quickly talk a bit about cloud-based reconstruction. So as you all know, over the last years, there has been a quite significant increase in the computational demand of modern MRI reconstruction algorithms. And in my opinion, there are two categories of algorithms driving this. On the one hand, we now have compressed sensing type algorithms or generally model-based algorithms where we have an iterative optimization procedure. And during this optimization, we are always mapping back and forth between image space and case space. And typically this has to be done for each received channel. So really a lot of FFTs that happen here. And then recently deep learning based reconstruction algorithms have been introduced. And there are of course many different variations of these deep learning algorithms. But many of these algorithms unroll this iterative optimization procedure into a long chain of, uh, of operations. So from a computational perspective, it's, it's actually not much different. So also very computationally demanding. So in both cases, we really have a high number of FFT operations and a high number of filter operations that have to be performed. And typically you need to run these algorithms on a GPU in order to achieve sufficient reconstruction speed. And that makes it really difficult to implement these modern algorithms on existing clinical MRI scanners, because first of all, many of the existing MRI scanners don't have a GPU at all, or they might not have enough memory. And even if they have a GPU, oftentimes certain software components are missing or they are outdated. Things like CUDA drivers or Docker. And the problem is, since these are clinical MRI scanners, you are not allowed to update or install any additional software libraries on these scanners. Then the vendor SDKs are also quite complex and unfortunately they are barely documented, which makes it really challenging as an outside developer to implement something on the scanner. And the last point, many of these vendor frameworks have not been designed for long running tasks, which means that the reconstruction blocks the scanner and that's of course a problem. If you have a reconstruction algorithm that runs maybe for 15 minutes, that's not acceptable in clinical practice. You cannot block the scanner for 15 minutes. And I think that these are some of the reasons why the clinical translation of these new reconstruction algorithms always takes quite a long time. So what can you do as an alternative, as a workaround? The alternative is to implement your reconstruction algorithm as an offline reconstruction. And offline reconstruction means that you export the raw data using some vendor provided tool on the scanner. Then you transfer the raw data file from the scanner to a separate computer. And then you calculate the images on the separate computer using a custom developed program. And this offline reconstruction approach really eliminates all hardware and software constraints. So now you can implement your reconstruction algorithm using any programming language that you like which of course makes it much easier to implement your algorithm. And in addition to that, it also makes it possible to openly share the source code of your reconstruction algorithm without potential IP violations, because now your reconstruction code is completely separate from, from any vendor code. And I think that's a quite interesting point for reproducible research. Now, there are many different frameworks available that you can use for implementing your algorithm. A classical choice would be to use MATLAB, Many researchers and many students are very familiar with MATLAB, and there are many toolboxes and sample code available. Um, what I personally do not like too much about MATLAB is that it's a commercial solution and it's quite expensive and not everyone has access to MATLAB. 
But today there are a number of really good open source alternatives available. Uh, one popular choice is BART uh, with the BART toolbox that Martin Uecker presented this morning. BART is a C-based uh, framework and it, it comes with a quite large number of, of state-of-the-art reconstruction algorithms. And it also has a quite active uh, user community. So that's, that's a good choice. And then another popular choice, of course, is Gatchotron, which will be presented in the following talk. Gatchotron is a quite comprehensive C++-based framework. Um, and it comes with a lot of advanced functions like support for distributed computing, uh, computations and GPU support. So that's a good option too. And then recently, people have also started implementing their algorithms directly in Python. And there are now a number of support libraries available for that, like SIGPy. And this is, of course, especially interesting if you want to implement deep learning-based reconstruction algorithms, because all the large deep learning frameworks have also been written in Python. And these are just some of the options available. Um, there are more options, and you can find these options by going to the Emma Hub website that the ISMRM has put together. Now, once you have implemented your algorithm as an offline reconstruction, it is also important to clinically integrate your algorithm. Nowadays, there are so many different algorithms available. If you want to have an impact with your work and with your algorithm, it's really important to demonstrate that your algorithm can be used clinically and, then it and that it provides diagnostic value. And it is important to do this clinical evaluation in a sufficiently large number of patients. Otherwise, it's really hard to convince, convince people. And there are a few aspects that, that are really important for this clinical evaluation, at least in our experience. First of all, it's, it's necessary to make sure that the processing is automated as much as possible and the processing that the processing is reliable. Then ideally your algorithm should not only be available on a single MRI scanner, ideally it should be available on all MRI scanners in your department because patients get shuffled around in clinical practice. And then in the end, the images should be available in packs so that it's easy for the radiologists to look at the images. And these aspects I think are really important because if it's too complicated or creating too much extra work to use your reconstruction algorithm, then people will at some point stop using your algorithm and then that clinical translation might not happen. And this is exactly the situation that we had a few years ago. So in 2011, we developed a compressed sensing based reconstruction technique for dynamic contrast enhanced, enhanced MRI called GRASP. And GRASP makes the clinical workflow quite easy from the acquisition point of view. And therefore there was strong clinical interest in this GRASP technique. Um, but these compressed sensing reconstructions really take a long time. They can actually take up to one hour. And it's just infeasible to do that directly on the MRI scanner. And therefore we had to find a solution or develop a solution how we can do these reconstructions in our clinical practice as an offline reconstruction. And using this reconstruction pipeline that we developed and that I will describe in a minute, um, we are now able to perform about 80 patient scans every day. So we can really use this in our clinical practice. And in total, we have now performed way over 100,000 patient scans using this, using this technique, which was possible because, because of this automation. And in addition to that, we, we also shared our reconstruction algorithm with a quite large number of collaboration sites by making our software available. And before I will show the software, just a quick disclaimer on the following slides, I will show this NYU developed um, software pipeline, which we call the Yara framework. Um, but I want to point out that all our software is open source and it has been released under a GPL license. We have no plans to commercialize it and it's completely free to use. And you can also download the source code and you can modify it and extend it. It is currently limited to Siemens MRI scanners because we are a Siemens site but I hope that we can support other vendors as well at some point. Okay, so the way we do these offline reconstructions in our clinical practice is that first of all, we do a quick preview reconstruction on the scanner just to provide some feedback to the text. This preview reconstruction is typically done using gridding or something like that. And then the actual high quality reconstruction is performed offline on an external Linux server. And to do that, we developed a small client software that runs on all our MRI scanners. And using this client software, the raw data is transferred to one of our Linux servers where the jobs are queued. 
And this transfer is done over an SMB network connection together with the definition of what kind of reconstruction should be performed. And then our Yara server software takes one case at a time out of the queue. And it's then starting the requested reconstruction module and performing the reconstruction. And this module could be implemented in BART, in Gatchetron, in MATLAB. And after the reconstruction, it takes the reconstructed images, it inserts all the required DICOM tags, and then it's pushing the, the, the DICOMs into our clinical packs over a standard DICOM transfer. So this means basically from the moment when you submit the raw data from the MRI scanner, everything happens fully automatically. And in this way, we can use these reconstruction prototypes on a daily basis. And this setup has a lot of advantages for us. First of all, we do not have to modify the scanner hardware in any way. And this is really important because we are doing this with clinical scanners and we cannot change the network configuration of our clinical scanners. So it would not be possible to directly connect an additional reconstruction server to the scanner. Then we can implement our reconstruction algorithms using any language. And we are typically using multiple languages in parallel because our researchers have different preferences. And then an important point is that with this setup, there's one central location to manage all algorithms and to manage all reconstruction settings. And this is important because we are using the solution from about 30 different MRI scanners. And if I would have to physically go to 30 different scanners whenever I want to change one reconstruction parameter, that would be a total nightmare. And in this case, things just have to be changed on this server. Then it also scales. So instead of just having one server, you can have multiple servers and the reconstruction tasks are then distributed across servers. And we also integrated task routing, which means if you have a reconstruction algorithm that requires a specific hardware or a specific GPU, these tasks will then be routed to a matching server. And the last point is a nice side effect here is because all the data goes through these reconstruction servers, it's really easy to collect the raw data and to archive the raw data. And so we have created a large archive of raw data using this way. And that, that's of course very helpful if you want to optimize the algorithms at a later time. And this is how this reconstruction client looks like that runs on the scanner. And what we do is we add small tags to the sequence names. So we add something like underscore YPH to the sequence name. And in this way, with these tags, our reconstruction client knows for which scans a reconstruction should be performed. And it's then automatically assigning the required reconstruction algorithm to, to these scans. So that means the technicians really just have to press the send task button and then the data is sent away. And typically our technicians do that before taking the patient out of the scanner. And it turned out that this is easy enough so that they can really do this on a daily basis. Now the configuration of the reconstruction algorithms is done using a web-based server interface. So you can log into this using your web browser. And you can then first of all, look at what the server is currently doing. You can then look at the output of the reconstruction algorithm. So the output of the algorithm is recorded, which, which makes it very easy to debug algorithms. And then on this queue page, you can see which jobs are in the queue. You can click on a job and maybe modify a job if there was a problem. And the configuration of the reconstruction algorithms is done on this configuration page here. So here you can really define whether you want to run a Gatchetron module or whether you want to start a BART module. And then down here, you can see which reconstruction algorithms have been installed. And it's very easy to install additional algorithms. Just have to press this install button here. And then you have to upload your algorithm as a zip file and it will be installed. So it's very easy to install and update uh, reconstruction algorithms. And it's also very easy to share reconstruction algorithms with collaboration partners. So we are also seeing this as a platform for making algorithms available in a way that they can be used clinically. Now, once you start using such reconstruction prototypes routinely, people of course expect that things work all the time. And therefore we also integrated monitoring functions. First of all, the server is sending out emails whenever a task completes or when there's a problem with a task. And these error emails have the log output attached as a log file so that you can directly look into the email, you can look at what the problem was and then restart the job on the server um, the raw data always stays on the server. And then in addition to these emails, we also developed something called Yara Log Server, 
which is a quite comprehensive monitoring solution that really allows us to monitor all components like our scanners, servers, and all the clients. And it's impossible to create such dashboards and to visualize this data. And we can then measure things like average reconstruction time or typical number of reconstructions per day or typical server load. And if you think that this is something that could be useful for, for your projects as well, um, please go to our website at yawaframework.org. Um, you can download all the software. We have the documentation online and there are also some tutorials. And there's also a chat available. And using this chat, you can get in touch with us and, and we are trying our best to, to answer all questions. Okay, moving on to cloud-based reconstruction. So as I mentioned, we shared our algorithms with quite a large number of collaboration sites. And typically these collaboration partners install their own Linux servers. But sometimes there are potential collaboration partners who are not able to install a Linux server, either because they don't have the technical knowledge how to do that, or they don't have staff for operating the server. And sometimes there's just not enough money available. And therefore we were wondering if it wouldn't be possible to use the cloud instead for these reconstructions so that you don't have to install your own server. And using the cloud makes a lot of sense because first of all, it automatically scales because in this case, we can start a new virtual machine for each reconstruction that's performed. It's very easy to maintain because you don't have to install anything or update anything. And it's also very cost effective because you're only really paying something when you're using the algorithm. And all the big IT companies nowadays uh, have data centers around the globe so that the connection speed to the cloud is really fast enough to do this pretty much from anywhere in the world nowadays. Now, how do you use the cloud in practice? Well, if you go to the website of AWS, for instance, and look at which cloud products do they offer, you'll find this very confusing and very long list of different cloud services. So if people talk about the cloud, what, what the cloud really is, the cloud is a potpourri of individuals cloud-based service components, things like file storage, virtual machines, maybe a database service or a messaging service. And in order to compose these services and in order to build really something that's really easy to use for the end user, you actually have to do quite a lot of programming work and, and, and really put these different services together. And a few years ago, we went through that exercise and we developed a platform called Yara Cloud. And Yara Cloud for us was really a feasibility study where we really wanted to see whether it's possible to offer reconstruction as a service in a really easy to, to use way. So the idea would be that you sign up for this platform and then it seamlessly integrates into our Yara reconstruction framework, which means if you start the Yara cloud, uh, the Yara client on your computer, um, you can now see these uh, icons in front of the different reconstruction algorithms. And if it shows a house, that means this algorithm is running on your own Linux server. And if it shows a cloud, it means the reconstruction will be performed in the cloud. And in our case, we are removing all patient information before uploading data to the cloud, just to be on the safe side. Configuration is done using a very simple user interface so that you don't have to think about all these cloud services that are running in the background. And we are metering the utilization and the costs for the compute resources that are used uh, are then charged to a credit card that you have to put down when signing up for the service. So that's the idea of the service. And how does it work in the background? We developed an agent, a cloud agent, that runs on the scanner. And when you submit a case for reconstruction, this Yara cloud agent will first of all anonymize the raw data. And then it's uploading the raw data into the cloud using an API that we created. And this Yara cloud API is then creating a new uh, cloud, a new virtual machine for each reconstruction. And it's then launching the requested reconstruction algorithm inside this virtual machine. And then once the reconstruction has finished, the cloud agent will download the images back again onto the MRI scanner. It will then reinsert the patient information into the DICOM images and then push the DICOM images into the packs so that this all works fully automatically again. And in this case, the configuration of the reconstruction settings is again done using a web-based interface, which is now running in the cloud. And here are some screenshots. This is how this um, cloud agent looks like. So you can look at um, which job is currently running. You can click on the job and 
you can see more information. For instance, we are measuring how long the upload takes and turns out that the upload is really fast usually. And you can then also look at the completed jobs and you can look how expensive these individual jobs were. And then this is this web-based configuration interface. Again, you can see which jobs are running. You can click on this. You can see what kind of virtual machine is used for this reconstruction. You can see the log output. Um, we also integrate a small image viewer so that you can get a preview of the reconstruction. Um, you can see how much money you have spent this month and see some statistics. And this is then where you can also set up your reconstruction parameters in this, in this uh, web-based interface. So that's the idea of this interface and how well does it work in practice? So turns out our experience is that cloud-based reconstruction works really, really well. We, we never really had any technical problems with it. It works very reliably. But unfortunately, what we also experienced is that there is still a very strong hesitancy to use cloud-based services with medical data, which was a little bit unexpected. Um, and just to give a concrete example here, uh, we are currently conducting a multi-center study on deep learning reconstruction. And because the study participants do not have the required GPUs, uh, we are using this Yara Cloud platform for this study. So they are using it at nine different participating sites. And it actually took over one year to get all the approvals from the different IT departments and from the different IRBs in order to get permission to use the cloud. So that has been a quite frustrating experience, to be honest. So therefore, my conclusion sort of is, um, from a technical perspective, cloud-based reconstruction works really well. But at this point, it's still very difficult to use cloud-based reconstruction in practice just for these entirely for these political reasons. So I think still more education is necessary before it's really viable to use cloud-based reconstruction for, for a lot of applications. So to give a few take-on points here, so implementing algorithms directly on the MRI scanner is quite challenging. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. However, today there are really different, very good community supported frameworks available for offline reconstruction. And it is actually possible to use offline reconstruction in clinical practice if the processing is automated and reliable. And it also makes it very easy to share reconstruction algorithms with the research community. Cloud-based reconstruction is also feasible nowadays. It, it works very well and there are many advantages, but at this point, it's still quite difficult to use it in practice because of these political issues. So my recommendation would be to still go with an on-premise solution for now until you really enjoy dealing with, with IT departments. And yeah, that's what I wanted to show. And I'm, I'm happy to, to answer a few questions if there are questions.